Goss. Here. Harper. Here. Ingram. Here. King Taylor. McGuire. Present. Patterson. Rector. Here. Store. Summers. Here. Taylor. Here. Dorsland. Here. Tinsley. Present. Patispati. Here. Woken. Here. Young. Here. Clemens. Clifford. Here. Cowart. Eisenman. Here. Esri. Here. Rosales. Here. Okay, I declare quorum present. The prayer for this evening is from um, G.K. Chesterton. God, if seeds in the black earth can turn into such beautiful roses, what might not be the heart of man become on its long journey toward the stars? Will we rise for the Pledge of Allegiance? Okay, will the clerk read the notice of the meeting, please? Notice is hereby given that a regular meeting of the County Board Champaign County Illinois will convene on February 21st, 2019 at 6.30 p.m. in the Lyle Shields Meeting Room, Brookings Administrative Center, 1776 East Washington Street, Urbana, Illinois, in said county for the purpose of allowing and ordering payment of claims against the county, receiving and acting upon reports of committee, and such other matters as may be brought before said meeting, which said meeting shall continue in session from day to day until the completion of said business. Okay, thank you. Next is approval of the agenda. Notice that there's an addendum for item 14B, 4 and 5 and 6 to be added under new business. Any other changes to the agenda? Can I get a motion to approve? Second. Mr. Esri, Mr. Rosales. Discussion? Those in favor? Those opposed? The agenda is adopted. Next is the date and time of our next regular meetings, standing committee meetings. The committee of the whole will be meeting at its regular time. And then note that there's a county board study session this month on February the 26th, and then our regular meeting in March. Okay. Next, we'll have public participation. If anyone wishes to participate from the public. Okay, seeing none, no public participation, it's closed. Um, next on the agenda is the consent agenda. We need a roll call to approve items on the consent agenda. Can I get a motion to approve the consent agenda? Mr. Goss, Mr. Rosales, any discussion? Seeing none, this requires a simple majority, but roll call vote. Hurtado? Goss? Yes. Harper? Yes. Ingram? Yes. King Taylor? Yes. McGuire? Patterson? Rector? Summers? Yes. Taylor? Yes. Dorsland? Yes. Tinsley? Yes. Batispati? Yes. Woken? Yes. Young? Yes. Clemens? Yes. Clifford? Yes. Cowart? Yes. Eisenman? Yes. Esri? Yes. Rosales? Thank you. The motion passes. Next on our agenda is communications. Does any member of the board have a communication to present to the board? Mr. Clemens? Yes, I've received a few phone calls from um, some elected officials um, over some discrepancies on their le levy confirmation sheets. Um, I think we've got that resolved. Um, they came into the clerk's office the other day. I um, think it's just a new software issue, but I would just like um, all of our local municipalities to really look their levies over. Um, we have a lot of new faces in that office, and we want to catch these mistakes before it's too late. And uh, I'd also like to stress the issue of making sure that we get the tax bills out on time. Um, a lot of these local municipalities are really waiting on that money, local school districts. Um, so that, that's about all I had. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Mr. Ingram? 
Uh, just a reminder, uh, I mentioned at last meeting or at the Cal, um, today's the 21st. Uh, up until the 28th, the Champaign Park District is uh, looking for people to um, turn in their nominations uh, for the Martin Center. One of the wings is going to be um, named, uh, there's an anonymous donor who's put forth uh, the money for it and is looking for nominations um, of an African-American educator uh, from the area for it to be named after. Um, this donor will be looking over those. Um, with uh, Willetta Donaldson recently passing, I don't think we could get a better person to, uh, to nominate for that. Although my suggestion to some friends and my own nomination was uh, for Kiwan Carrington. Um, I understand he wasn't an educator, but he certainly taught a whole lot uh, to this community. And also, he could have been an educator. So, uh, that's all I got. Thank you. Any other communications from the board? Okay, moving on to approval of the minutes. May I have a motion to approve the minutes? Ms. Mr. Vashasvati and Ms. King Taylor. Any discussion? Seeing none, those in favor? Aye. Those opposed? Motion passes. Next, we have a summary of action taken from February 5th, 2019 for County Facilities Committee. This is accepted and placed on file. Will the committee's chair please read the committee's recommendation for item one? Uh, for facilities, adoption of resolution number 2019-26, approving award of contract to scale and excavating and concrete in incorporated pursuant to ITB 2109001 for construction of the Art Bartel sidewalk project. And if I could uh, have a motion to that effect. So moved. Mr. Okay. Summers. Okay, Mr. Summers um, and Mr. Rector. If I could comment on this. Uh, yes, please. Um, of course, we, earlier this month, we all. Tour of the two jail facilities, and we had a meeting at the sheriff's office. Uh, it was a unanimous vote by committee to accept this. Uh, it was a low bid. Uh, I know Mr. Summers had a question for Dana, and he's had that answered, I believe. Uh, yes, we'd like to have kept it a little more local. Uh, Scanlon's out of Kankakee, but uh, I think it was going to be roughly twenty-five thousand dollars more in fees if we next closer to bid. So we, that's all I had to say. It did pass unanimously by committee, but we just wanted everybody. Okay, thank you. Any other discussion? Seeing none, those in favor? Aye. Those opposed? Motion passes. The next is environmental and land use. Summary of action taken on the February 7th, 2019 meeting is accepted and placed on file. The Highway and Transportation Committee summary of action taken on Feptem September, uh, I'm sorry, February 8th, 2019. February 8th. 2019 is accepted and placed on file. Next, areas of responsibility. Summary of action on February 12, 2019 at the Committee of the Whole is accepted and placed on file. Will the finance chair please read the committee's recommendation for item one? Thank you, Madam Chair. I move adoption of resolution 2019-33, amending the schedule of authorized position for the office of the Champaign County Sheriff. Is there a second? Seconded by McGuire. Discussion? Ms. Furtado? Um, I'd like to move to refer this um, item back to the Policy and uh, Personnel um, Committee. Is second. there a second to that? Second, yeah. Second. Mr. Sorry. Patterson? Mr. Patterson, Ooh. second. Discu Ooh. Discussion? Mr. McGuire? Yeah, it's like the like Kyle. We explained it in the hallway why we're returning this to be deferred. Or, or so, go ahead, Stephanie. So um, uh, after it had come out in the original packet, some of the people that were involved in the original Racial Justice Task Force, which, as you recall, is where this idea came from, emailed um, several people, including Kyle, about um, concerns about the language, not um, major concerns, just to make sure that it more closely um, matched what the goals were from the Racial Justice Task Force. And so um, Steve Summers and I went and talked to uh, Sheriff, and before we were there for five minutes, he said, you know, 
um, now that I understand this position a little bit more, I'd like it. I'd like to revisit the language. So he just it, this is at the sheriff's request. Any further discussion, Ms. Heidelman? Uh, I just want to clarify. What do you mean by the language that you want to take? Um. Sure. So they, they were concerned about, th they want to make sure that it's more uh, clear the community liaison port part of this. They wanted um, language about that the data that we're analyzing, f you know, put it into context of statewide and national data. And just, I mean, the, the racial justice task force was pre pretty specific and the Urbana job description for a similar position was pretty specific. So we're just making sure it matches more to that. Any further discussion? And I should say too, since the sheriff's um, data is um, is going through a transition right now, the delay really, the most of his data is going through a software transition. It's not like we're losing, I mean, a month isn't gonna really make us lose that much time for them to do. Um, there's not that much data for him to, them to be an analyzing during that process anyway, so. Mr. McGuire? Yes. Well, I, I, I understand there were some concerns with the job description. Um, job descriptions can't carry, cover everything that there is a, the expectation of a position is going to do. Uh, we had that discussion the last time. But actually, we've lost months waiting for this new position to start because of the changeover in the sheriff's office. Uh, I think the sheriff covered the, what his expectations were very well last month. Um, there's a lot of the biggest I think part of this com component of this position is working with all the social service agencies and working with the people that we most want to impact in this community um, to support the families that are here and I think delaying this con continuing to delay this uh, position um, is really hurting the people we most want to help um, and we've done that now for months and I, I can't see you continuing to do that I will say, I'm oh, sorry, Ms. Furtado. I will say, <laughs> since I was in the conversations with the um, the previous um, sheriff's office, is that this schedule is faster than the conversation. Like when I talked to them, the the understanding was that the position might not happen right at the beginning of the year, bec in part because of the so software transition. So I actually don't think the timeline has changed substantially, or actually changed at all. I would disagree. Okay. Yeah, um, in, in deference to Jim's discussion about the uh, job description, we did have a big discussion about it last week. Um, you know, sadly, I have to write these for, you know, lower level kind of jobs at work, and the job description is often sort of the boilerplate and the framework that you fall back on when first when you're interviewing people. So I think it should accurately reflect with the racial justice task force, what the sheriff has decided to add to it. Uh, and to stress exactly what you're talking about in the job description better than it does. Uh, Stephanie points out, you know, this came from the sheriff before this one. It, I think it's actually going pretty quick. And uh, I don't think we're gonna lose any time. Making the job description right is probably critical to finding the right person. Since we're not paying a lot of money, we should at least find the right person. So that's all. Mr. Esri? With, I don't, I would imagine that, I'm just throwing this out there, I would imagine any changes to the job description wouldn't be so drastic as to, it would need to be reevaluated for pay scale. I can't imagine that would be the case. Uh, yeah, I mean, I just, I, I, I would I would sure hope not anyway. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I can't, I would hope it wouldn't be. Let's put it that way. Mr. Summers? The sheriff's express intent originally was simply to table the commission. Our uh, county executive suggested it would expedite things if we put it directly, referred it back to policy personnel and appointment. So that's the reason why rather than just to, to table, we're moving that way. And that is with the intent of trying to get things to move, move on faster. It would be inappropriate to table the motion. If you table the motion, we would just need to take it up later in the meeting tonight which we're not going to, which it doesn't sound like we're doing. So if you want to refer it back to committee, you can do that or you can 
you can um, amend that motion to um, postpone it to the next meeting. Those are the choices. Okay. The motion on the table is to refer it to back to committee. There's been a second. Is there any further discussion? Ms. Eisenman? I just want to triple check because that's just who I am. That the sheriff is totally okay with this because he sat here last week and was okay with what it said. I, I will be honest. I did not go into his office with this request. That was not what I was asking. Five minutes into the meeting, he's like, oh, well, we just need to table this and revisit it and rewrite it. It was at his request. Okay. Right? And it is at his request because he wants to make sure that it meets the needs of the community members that he's trying to serve with this position. Okay. And they're the people who had issues about it. Right. So it's, it's, it's a request coming from the community and the sheriff. Okay. I actually think it's it's really not that big a deal. Like, it's just we're going to change the language and we're going to vote on it in a month. Right. Mr. McGuire? Um, Aaron's question made me think that um, if the components of this job description do change, it may have to go back to the job content committee for reevaluation. Any further comments? Okay, the motion again is whether we table whether we refer this back to committee. Those in favor? Aye. Those opposed? Okay, motion passes. We are now moving on to old business, policy personnel and appointments. We're still on policy personnel and appointments because we've had still got appointments to make. Will the policy chair please read the county board chair's appointments to the committee members for the litigation committee? Thank you, County Executive Kleppel. Number one, the appointment of um, committee members to litigation committee, Chair Rosales, Vice Chair Clifford, Member Eisenman, Storr, and Thorsland. Can I get a motion? Okay. King Taylor first. Moved by King Taylor, seconded by Ms. Cowart. Any discussion? Any discussion? I'm back. It's back to me. Oh, okay. <laughs> Any well, discussion? you then. Okay. I got it. <laughs> Those in favor? Aye. Those opposed? Okay. Okay. Motion passes. Thank you. Okay. Number two, the appointment of remaining county board liaison by the county board chair and, and county executive. Appointed by County Board Chair, Labor Management Health Insurance Committee, Watkins Alternate, um, Community Coalition, Rector and Young, um, Extension Services Council, Goss, Regional Office of Education, Clifford, Veterans Assistant Commission, Rector, and appointed to the County Executive, Regional 8 Human Service Transportation Plan, HSTP Policy, Rosales, Workforce Innovation and Opportunity Acts. This thing acting up. Store as alternate. Can I get a motion? Can I get a motion? Oh, you doing that? Okay. You're, you're actually, you're motioning it, Charles, because it's coming oh. from second, committee. I second Sorry. your motion. Thank you. Okay, Mr. McGuire seconds. Any discussion? Seeing none. Those in favor? Aye. Those opposed? Motion passes. Thank you. Okay. New business. Policy person and appointment. Um, I can move this, right? No. Okay. One, adoption resolution <laughs> number 2019-37 to establish place of election for Muhammad 3 and 4. Okay. I'm sorry. Who moved that? Goss. Mr. Goss. Second by Mr. Clemens. Any discussion? Seeing none, those in favor? Aye. Those opposed? Motion passes. Okay, number two. Adoption resolution number 2019-38 to establish place of election for Cunningham 17. Can I get a motion? Yep. Was that you? Yeah. Yeah. All moving, move. I you move. move it. Uh, all right, second please. Second by Ingram. Got it now. Discussion? Did you say, would you want to say something, Parnshaw? Okay. Seeing no discussion, 
Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Did some? Yes, Mr. Patterson. <laughs> the clerk is coming forward to answer questions. Good evening, everybody. Uh, I really ask about the. Uh, at the Urbana Library, are are you going to uh, be transferring as far as like the staff that would have been at the Civic Center to the library to account for that? Well, so we we'll, we definitely plan to have uh, the maximum number of election judges at the location at the library. Uh, as far as the staff moving over, really that's just the uh, the election judges. Uh, we don't we don't double the election judges when that happens. We, we still stick with the number five. Uh, the closing of the Urbana Civic Center, of course, we knew about it ahead of time, but, you know, a lot of transition, a lot of change in the office. It's difficult to find a location in that short period of time, so I didn't want to do a, uh, to combine those two, but really that was the best option at this point. And, um, and in the memo you provided, you uh, mentioned that you're going to be using the Pine Lounge at the Line of Union. Yes. Uh, and that's something for a while that we've uh, wanted, that we've not been able to accomplish that. How did that work out? Uh, I called Mr. Singson uh, at the Illini Union and let him know that we wanted to use the, the Pine Lounge room for, uh, for voting for the students. We set up a meeting, uh, myself, uh, my senior election specialist and one of my deputy county clerks went over to meet with them. Also had had a conversation with the liaison from uh, the chancellor's office. I don't think anyone wanted to see what we saw in the last election, so they have been very supportive. So we had a meeting and uh, ironed out. There was some difficulties for April 2nd as far as timing, but uh, we were able to, to do that. Uh, in 2015, there were three days of early voting. We're going to double that and do six days of early voting, and it will be done at the Pine Lounge Room on the first floor at the Union. And we're also going to hold the all-future elections there in the Pine Lounge, either in the Pine Lounge Room or the equivalent room just uh, east uh, of that. There's the same size room over by the Illini Credit Union. Same size, better lighting. Actually, we kind of like that room even better. But we were guaranteed to be on the first floor for 2020 and 2022 and all the elections going forward. It Thanks. was a simple meeting. Any other questions or discussion? Mr. Vassar's pocket? Yeah, just out of curiosity. So I assume part of those six days will be on the weekend? Yes, we have. It will be begin on the 27th, March 27th, all the way through April 1st. Okay. And, and do you have plans? So I know, like, in the fall, in the November election, the Sunday before Election Day, there were only, like, three or four hours of early voting at the union. Do you plan to No, I think the hours through? are extended. I think it's a six-hour span. I'm okay. not sure. I don't have that information in front of me right now, but I'm pretty sure that's what it is. But it, it is a uh, – on Sunday – at the churches, it's difficult. It's like 1 to 4, of but course, I'm pretty yeah. sure we're from 10 to 4 at the line I use. Okay, cool. Thanks. Going back to Urbana, I have poll watch there, so I know it's not the library. I know it's not super busy, but I think this puts three precincts there because it already had two, correct? No, no, no. This is only this only puts two precincts. It only puts two. Okay, good. Okay. And yeah, we are yeah. looking to, uh, for 2020, we're looking for a location. I do not want them to be right. combined for okay. 2020. I think that would be right. too much traffic. I, I know at some past election there was two there, and it seemed like it was fine. So um, that might have been a few years ago. It probably was for some other similar type of reason. So, But you don't anticipate that it will be too busy? No, not at all. Right. Uh, we hope that there's uh, an increase in the turnout, but uh, we can handle whatever that load is going to be. Okay. Okay, any further questions? Thank you, Thank you Mr. Officer. Ammons. Okay, moving on to, oh, needing to vote, sorry, yes. Those in favor? Aye. Those opposed? Motion passes. Okay, moving on to finance. Um, adoption of resolution 2019-34, authorizing payment of claims. Can I get a motion? So moved. Mr. Goss? Second. Discussion? Seeing none, those in favor? Aye. Those opposed? Motion passes. Adoption of resolution, I'm sorry. 
Pardon? Shouldn't it be the finance chair bringing these forward instead of the county executive? Okay, that's fine. I. They're not coming from committee, so it's right. whatever. Well, if, I mean, it's the same as. If you want to read them, that's fine. Adoption of resolution number 2019-35, authorizing purchases not following purchasing policy. Is there a motion? Rosales, second. Thorsland. Okay, Madam Chair, do you have? Any you discussion? Have Ms. Furtado? I, I guess I was a little bit um, surprised at how brief this is, um, especially given I would assume that we're paying a lot of nursing home stuff that I guess I would have, that would have been old, that I would have anticipated being on here because of its age. Mm -hmm. I just, so that's, I don't really know how that's a question. I, my question is, this is the smallest one since I've been here, and I kind of anticipated mm -hmm. it would be the biggest one um, since, based on that we're paying a lot of bills from the nursing home. So I just was curious about that. Okay. <laughs> I've never seen one with these with one thing on it, and I would uh, I would have anticipated all that old nursing home stuff would be on here. So, I yeah, just not having been here in January, yeah, I, maybe I thought maybe we got it through in January, but I didn't I go back. Tammy, can you answer that question? <laughs> I mean, I anticipated sorry that there'd be like a m yes, one point two million dollars of mm -hmm. nursing home stuff on here. Um, I. I know that Mr. Anderson is here. Um, if he would like to correct me, but um, I, my assumption is that those had been caught up to the point where now they're not showing up because I know for 2018 we're still um, they wouldn't be recorded as purchases not following purchasing policy just prior to that. Is that accurate, Mr. Anderson? Sorry. Okay. So 2018 bills that are being paid, um, we've caught up to the point where we're now just paying 2018 invoices, which which would not be outside of the purchasing policy. Okay. okay any further discussion? Seeing none. Those in favor? Aye. Those opposed? Motion passes. Okay, adoption of resolution number 2019-36, authorizing budget transfer 18-00014, fund 076 toward immunity tax to Department 075 General County, amount is $15,230, reason work comp rates increase, the increase on January 1st of 2019, January payroll charged back to FY 2018. Pay periods from 1216 to 1231, 2018. Is there a motion? Harper, second. Second, Esri. Any discussion? Okay. This requires um, 15 votes and a roll call vote. Furtado? Goss? Yes. Harper? Yes. Ingram? Yes. <coughs> Ms. Taylor? Yes. Ms. Wagner? Yes. Ms. Patterson? Yes. Rector? Yes. Summers? Yes. Ms. Taylor? Yes. Thorsland? Yes. Tinsley? Yes. Bates Body? Yes. Woken? Yes. Young? Yes. Clemens? Yes. Clifford? Yes. Coward? Yes. Eisenman? Yes. Esri? Yes. Lazar? Yes. Okay, motion passes. Okay, at this time I move that we enter into closed session pursuant to 5 ILCS 120-2 subset C6 to discuss the setting of a price for the sale or lease of property owned by Champaign County. I further move that, that the following individuals remain present county executive, the county's legal counsel, the temporary special projects coordinator, the deputy director of finance, the transition administrator, and the recording secretary. Is there a second? Second, Esri. Okay, any discussion? Those in favor? Aye. Those opposed? Okay, the board will move to the Jenny Putnam room for closed session, and we will... I'm sorry, roll call. Needs a roll call. Sorry. Sorry. 
Furtado? Yes. Goss? Yes. Harper? Yes. Ingram? Yes. King Taylor? Yes. McGuire? Yes. Patterson? Yes. Rector? Yes. Store? Yes. Summer? Yes. Taylor? Yes. Norslin? Yes. Tinsley? Yes. Batasquati? Yes. Woken? Yes. Young? Yes. Clemens? Yes. Clifford? Yes. Eisenman? Yes. Esri? Yes. Lazar? Yes. Okay, now the motion passes. We will move to the Jenny Putnam room, and for those else here, you can wait here. We'll be back to finish business when we're finished with the closed meeting. And I'm calling the regular meeting back to order at 8.07. We need a roll call, please, to see if our quorum is here. Furtado? Goss? Here. Harper? Here. Ingram? King Taylor? Here. McGuire? Here. Patterson? Rector? Here. Store? Summers? Here. Taylor? Here. Thorsland? Here. Tinsley? Present. Dr. Squatty? Here. Woken? Here. Young? Here. Clemens? Here. Clifford? Here. Cowart? Eisenman? Here. Esri? Here. Lozala? Here. Hey, a quorum's present. So we're going back to our business, which will be the two addendum items from finance. Um, Jim, do you want to read those? Yes. Uh, I need a motion for adoption of resolution number 2019-55, authorization for accounts payable loan authority to the Champaign County Nursing Home Fund from the General Corporate Fund. Is there such a motion? Mr. Rosales, second. Ms. Furtado, discussion. I do. Discussion. Mr. McGuire? Yes, I'd like to defer this item and the next one until the study session. I believe this item um, is out of order. I believe it takes 15 votes. Um, I believe also that there is no current budget for March for the nursing home, that uh, we should have a budget amendment and 15 votes for that budget amendment. So I'd like that brought back to us during that study session uh, with that uh, proper re resolution for this um, budget amendment for, for that um, budget and then this item and the following. Okay, I think the motion is out of order because I don't think you can bring business to the study session. I'm sorry, you're correct. I want a special meeting before the study session. Okay, so good question. Let's see. So you're asking that we would um, uh, take this take this business to the to have a special meeting, move to a certain date. I would like to move this to a special meeting before the study session so that we can, on the 26th, so that we could um, do, do that business then. Okay, it's been moved that we move this to a special meeting on the 26th of February we before the we study session. We have a motion session. and a second. We can't have a motion within a motion. We, he, we? He's motioning this but to we've move already, it. But we're already with he's motioning to postpone it to, to the meeting. Wouldn't we have to vote this down? Mr. Rector has so seconded the motion. the motion. Is there discussion on the proposal to move this item to a special session before the study session? Ms. Furtado. I, actually, I do actually, I, I have a question. Have we, we, we haven't appropriated the revenue or the expenditures for March. Is that, that's accurate, Jenny? The budget amendment that we prepared was for two months plus wind down costs. 
So we do believe there is adequate appropriation to cover the expenditures if we do have to operate in March. However, we will have to come to you in March for a budget amendment um, to be able to cover the incentives and the payouts and so forth because we would be tapping into those um, personnel costs in order to be able to pay for um, March payrolls. Mr. Esri? Personally, with the hope that we can get this closed at the end of this month, still, um, I would rather see a budget amendment come in March. My thoughts. It would. Any other discussion, Ms. Furtado? Wouldn't it probably, though, need to come before March um, in order to pay the bills that start in March? Okay. So we. <clears throat> We have adequate appropriation to be able to pay for those expenses, but the issue is cash flow. So if we are going to operate in March, we're asking for an extension for these loans so that we can manage the cash in order to be able to actually pay the bills. Even though there is appropriation to pay them, the cash is an issue. Mr. McGuire? Actually, I, I believe this is this need to, needs to be deferred because it's out of order, because it doesn't meet our rules, because it's not, this, this is not a, we're not, we don't have a budget for March. When I reviewed the tape, of the recording for last, for December, the discussion indicated, and Tammy indicated then, that this would have to come back to us as a budget amendment at the end of February, which we are currently at, as a budget amendment to have funding to, for March. I'm not sure how long it's going to take for us, how much money is going to be available, but there's just wind down funds, as was indicated. And Stephanie even said the same thing and asked that question, whether we would have to have a budget amendment to have a budget for March. Um, we don't actually have any budget to run for March. There's no payroll. There's no uh, budget to receive um, AR or um, AP for March. And uh, without that, we're just loaning money to a non-existent fund in the budget. Ms. Coward. Um, I'd like to know, even if we do this amendment, uh, it doesn't mean that we have to get, spend the money. We're not going to give the money to them uh, in February so they can have it on hand, but it'll be there. <coughs> And our general force in, in case they need it? We're not asking for a budget amendment. We're asking for loan authority if we have to operate in March. Um, one of the points of clarification I want to make is that when we prepared this budget amendment, even if the expectation was that we would be able to close on February 28th, that doesn't mean we would stop paying bills that were still coming in for operating in January and February. So again, the budget amendment was, was prepared for the two months of operations plus wind down costs, which would include the receipt and payment of bills that the county is still receiving after a sale um, would have closed on the end of February, at the end of February. So there is adequate appropriation to be able to operate in March. Part of that um, appropriation was for payout of incentives and um, benefit pay. We will have to come back in March in order to ask for appropriation to be able to make the benefit and incentive payouts because we will not have enough appropriation after having made for the pay, pay periods that we will have to pay out in March. But what we are asking for is loan authority not a budget amendment at this time. Mr. Esri. So our initial budget amendment for the two months and wind down authority, well, this is for operations is the way I read these two resolutions. It's not winding down, it's operating it for a whole nother month. So I see that as needing to be a budget amendment. Yeah, we had a, quite a discussion over this before we made this vote, and um, 
to extend it in December. Um, and that, that was why there was a clarification about needing a budget amendment to go past December 29th because the wording would have been different. Um, and why it, there's a real issue and there was a lot of discussion when we changed the this recommendation to SOA, Treasurer, Auditor, County Administrator back in 2007 to dis dis discontinue loans and authorization and funding for the budget amendments back then because it creates this conflict of who's in control of the of the budget for the, the county and, and who authorizes the spending because now we have a situation where we can continue loaning money to the nursing home uh, outside the budgets of the nursing home and operate the nursing home without the county board changing the budget for the um, county. Um, I, I feel that um, it creates a problem because we haven't properly funded the budget and our reserve is obviously an issue and we keep sending money into this and we haven't properly, uh, we don't have the funds to run the nursing home. We don't even really, if it continues the way it is, that doesn't mean this thing won't continue, we won't continue to have to run the nursing home um, and without a budget. Any further discussion? Ms. Eisenman. Um, I just wanna say that I don't know, I'm, gonna, I'm not following all of the motions that are on the floor, but to, I, I would vote no to these two current things as they are now because I'm hopeful that on February 28th we will sell it and then we can meet again and decide what to do from there. But like he said in December, it was a, a big point that you're gonna come back to us and we would budget it again for beyond February. And so I feel like this is outside of that. So. Okay, the motion on the table is whether we should um, Move, the, move these two items forward to the next meeting, which we will have to call a special meeting to do before the study session next week on February the 26th. That's the motion on the table. Jim? Yeah, roll call vote, please. Second, sorry, um, Clemens. We'd like a roll call vote. The, mo the, motion, the motion is to move these items forward, not vote on them tonight, move them forward to a meeting that will be held, a special meeting before the study session next week. Goss? Yes. Harper? Yes. Ingram? No. King Taylor? No. McGuire? Yes. Patterson? No. Rector? Yes. Store? No. Summer? No. Taylor? No. Dorslin? No. Kinsley? No. Nope. Dr. Scotty? No. Nope. Loken? Yes. Young? No. Clemens? Yes. Clifford? Yes. Colbert? No. Eisenman? Yes. Esri? Yes. Lazar? No. Okay, the vote did not pass, um, so we will not move this forward. So we will take a vote on the issue, <laughs> going back to the subject at hand, which is Adoption of Resolution 2019-55, um, and we will, is there any more discussion on that motion? Ms. Furtado. Um, I will say, although I did vote no on that, I, I do agree that with, with Jim that, um, especially on the accounts payable loan, not so much for the payroll loan, um, if it wasn't for a, an intimate sale, I don't, my, that, I guess, um, improves my comfort level with it, but I, I do, Jim, actually think that you do have a point. Um, the other thing I wanted to say is um, I, I don't believe the treasurer is here, but on these resolutions and on the past resolutions, 
It said that we were going to get emails if things were happening, and to my knowledge, we're not. And so um, I, I guess, I mean, I'm going to vote yes on these, but with the expectation, like, I honestly don't know w when did we spend on the, you know, on the month to month, we're not getting the emails about, um, you know, I've tapped into these loans. And at the, at the very least, if, we're give, if this board is giving the flexibility for the loans, there should be some reporting back to the board about how those loans are being used. And there just hasn't been. Okay, Mr. Esri? Yes, I intend to vote no on this one and the next resolution as well. The reasoning, again, I see this as operation, not any wind-down cost. That needs to be done through a budget amendment. A budget amendment takes 15 minimum votes, period. And the idea is because a budget amendment is more important, it needs more authority from the county board to go through than a simple, simple majority of a resolution for a loan. This isn't a loan. The nursing home is not making money. It can't pay it back. So what if we get it back when we sell it? This isn't a loan because the nursing home is not making money. They cannot pay it back. Selling it's something different. It's an asset that we own, so we sell it and we make money on it. The whole idea that in 2017 we went away from loans and we went to budget amendments because the outside auditors, the treasurer, everybody said that we needed to go to budget amendments because loans were not the correct way to do this. This is not going to get paid back through a loan. It's going to get paid back when and if we sell it. And even then, it's to me, it's an if, especially if we have to keep the um, levy going. This is operations that we're talking about here in these two. This is not a wind down. A wind down is anything that comes in afterwards that already happened when we owned it. If we close it on February 28th, we don't own it anymore. We don't, we don't need these. If we, if we still own it after February 28th, and we're going to try and, keep it, and by chance keep it going until the end of March for one more month, then we can t t tackle these. We've, we've deficit spent for how many, how many months and years with some of these vendors. If they can't hold out one more month, well, then I guess we better close it because, and, and who's to say, it sounds like we have money to operate through at least probably about the first half or first quarter of the month. So if it gets that desperate, then call a special meeting and let's put these down as a budget amendment. This loan is, idea, these ideas of these being loans are crap to me. Mr. Goss. Yeah, I can't support this gift on on number four. Um, I, I just I've railed on this for um, pretty much since I've been on the board. Um, this is this has gotten ridiculous. It's a gift because there's no way to pay it back. Um, and I I think the the next time that a loan goes out and we don't get an email on it, it will be the last loan that goes through this this committee, as far as I'm concerned. This is ridiculous that we've got elected officials that are not doing their job. It says right in every one of these resolutions, this is supposed to be notified, notice to the board. We, we can't tell you within $10,000 of where we're at on this. We probably can't tell you within 100000 other than we need 200000 now to carry on next month. This is ridiculous. It's a travesty that we can't get an elected official to do their job. I'm sick of it already, and it, there should be an expectation that when we put something in a resolution, we have somebody that follows the rules. I will not support this. I will not support the other one based on that premise alone. This board needs more oversight on this. We've got an asset here that we've let get away from this board for years. And the reason it got away for years is because nobody asked any damn questions. This is ridiculous. This has to stop, and it has to stop now. And you all realize this when we get to August and we start to put a, together a budget for next year. It's going to be ugly because we've spent money this year that we didn't have. All these pet projects that everybody thinks are out there, and we got a treasurer that thinks we got a surplus, ridiculous. I'm telling you, as the finance chair of this of this county board, this money doesn't exist. And if it, if I don't want to hear complaints from this board come August, 
that, well, but we, we don't have money to do this. We thought we had money to do this. You're not going to. I can tell you right now, all those fun little things that we think we're going to be able to fund, they're not going to exist. Just like the fact that if this thing gets to a closing, we're going to need to recover this money. We have overspent. We have robbed this county. We've got buildings that we haven't ever kept up because we would never put it a priority to take care of, of the facilities of this county. It's ridiculous. It's an embarrassment for this county that we've got a county of riches here and we never take care of facilities. We got a downtown jail that was built in 2000 or 1980 and the thing's garbage. And the reason is, is because nobody ever puts a priority on taking care of facilities. A lot of it's because we don't pay attention to what the, what's going on. I will not support these. I will not support another one that comes in front of this board. It's ridiculous. It's time to say no. Ms. Furtado. Um, while I echo some of the frustrations on the reporting side of, the, of my um, finance chair, as a deputy finance chair, though, um, I guess my question is, and, you know, we all are hoping that the, that the, the sale ends if it doesn't. And, um, you know, say it goes a week into March, this, you know, adamant no, I'm just curious as to, I mean, there has to be money to, 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 to run the home. Um, and so I guess sort of... Um, the only reason I guess that y'all would be saying that you want this to be a budget amendment because of a loan is because you want to not pass the budget amendment, right? Because otherwise you would all just, I mean, that's, and so if that is what you're saying, then, I mean, what's your plan if it doesn't close on February 28th? You're, I mean, are you saying that you've reached your limit, that you're going to walk away from it if it doesn't, I mean, that's, to me, what you're saying, um, Jim and Jim. Is, I mean, because I mean, if that's your big issue, is it should be a 15-person vote because it's a budget amendment, and you're saying that's because I mean, the only reason you say that is if you want to block it, right? And if that's your case, then what's your plan after February 28th? So you're, I guess, my question is, are you saying you've like just reached your limit with the nursing home? You're not willing to go one more month to sell it? That I mean, that's to me what I hear you saying. And if you're not, then I'm curious what you are well, saying. If you let me answer, I'll Mr. Tell you. McGuire, you have Thank the floor. You. Thank you. Um, no, actually, everybody's been making issues about the rules, and I think we're taking votes that are inappropriate, and we have no budget for the nursing home. I think Jim's points are well taken because we're not thoughtfully appropriating funds of the taxpayers to pay our bills. We sat there, we've sat there for the last two years and run, run the general fund into debt rather than making cuts or whatever we needed to do to properly fund the maintenance of the nursing home uh, for nurses or whatever we needed to do is spend at the nursing home to run it uh, appropriately so we'd have funds to run the general fund of the nursing home. Uh, we just think there's some money tree out there that will dump, that will go pull dollars off of and run the nursing home for the next month. And there isn't one. The general fund uh, reserve will be down to what, 8%, 9% if we keep going. And we're gonna owe money. And there's gonna be no place left to get it. We'll be just like the nursing homes funds. They were borrowing from tax anticipation warrants to pay their FICA. They had no fund for maintenance of the building and they couldn't pay people, so they had to come to us. And I don't want the general fund of the, of the county to be the same way, because there's no reason for it. That's why you have budgets. And we're not doing it that way. I want it done appropriately. It's not, it doesn't mean that we won't uh, vote for the appropriation of the budget. That's our responsibility. I want to fulfill our responsibility. That's why I was elected. Okay, Mr. Esri. 13 votes versus 15. That doesn't mean that I'm not going to necessarily vote to keep it going in March. 
should we need to keep it going in March? We don't know yet. I still hold hope out that we can close this at the end of this month. But the 15 votes is there by state statute because this is an important vote. I guess if you're willing to say that you only think it only needs a simple majority, we might as well do the whole budget by simple majority because it does, it's not important. 15 votes to me is important. That means that it's a super majority. It means that not just a simple majority. A simple majority is a simple majority of a majority of the board, the way I understand it. So that means if we had 12 people here, seven people could say yes on it. 15 votes is 15 votes. We're talking this county's financial viability. 15 votes is there for a reason. Whether you're for it or against it, it needs to be done properly. The idea that we're, um, the general corporate fund, the second line of this resolution, the general corporate fund is adequate reserves to cover the cash shortfall of the nursing homes, accounts payable shortfall on a short-term basis. Um, accounts payable, yes, we're going to have wind-down costs of pay, pay, accounts payable and wind-down costs. But the 200000 we're speaking again to a whole other month of operation. So that needs to be a budget amendment. The idea that it's a loan, to me, is the sticking point. It's not a loan, especially when it can't be repaid. It's a budget amendment, which needs 15 votes. It's procedure. It's not the idea that we won't keep it going for another month. Any further comments? Ms. Cowart? That's kind of confused. We're talking about paying accounts that are cured for January and February. Is that right, Tammy? Isn't that what you said this money will be used for? Accounts are payable. It's for bills that we are cured in January and February. No, this is a request for loan authority if we continue to operate the home in March, not January and February. Okay. So what we, we, are, we had the same loan authority for January and February, okay. and we're asking for that an extension of that in the event that we are not able to close on February 28th. Um, these would be for invoices that the county would be, um, you know, paying in March, probably for services that were provided prior to March. Well, prior to March would be February. Right. But, but because we are continuing operations, we're asking for this um, ability to be able to access cash to make sure that we can pay the bills that come in. And may I, um, in regards to the loan for payroll, that really is a short-term loan. I mean, the first revenues that come back in to the nursing home are used to repay that loan. So it, it really is a very short-term loan. Um, if you are going to treat that as a budget amendment, in my mind, y you're going to have to authorize $600,000 in budget amendments because you're, you're saying, you know, we're not expecting to be paid back for that loan that we authorized. Ms. King-Taylor. This is only contingent upon the nursing home not selling. Right, so we want to stick to that point because everything else will be null and valid at that point. So we're spending a lot of time on something that seems unnecessary to, or like mentioned words with amendment versus the loan itself. The loan is only there and they're asking for approval contingent upon it not selling on the 28th. Given the conversations we just had, we know what the likelihood or not if that, that is, right? Any further discussion? 
I'd like to rest, request a roll call vote, please. Yes. I, get, I, I don't know. Can somebody answer, Tanisha? Is that accurate? Like it's on contingent of if it fails, then they aren't going to use this at all. Is that accurate? Go with me. If we close on February 28th, we will not need this authority. No. So I just feel like, and I guess I'll go back to Stephanie, is I, I feel like why don't we wait until the 28th? Yes, I know it'll be inconvenient if we have to come back and do it, but if they're, they're, they were so hopeful and saying that they're, it's going to hopefully sell. So my point is, will it be inconvenient to come back and have a special meeting if we need it? Yes. But I don't feel comfortable saying yes because in the past it hasn't proven successful in giving them, it, they just keep using it. So I, I'm just saying, I'm going to vote no. I'm just trusting Stephanie because of that reason. And then the other one is in December when we voted on it, just like I asked you about the sheriff, I just want to verify when I vote, like what I was told at that meeting is what I believe today still. And at that time, it was a budget amendment in December. And so I'm going with that. Can, can I ask for clarification? Was the vote in December for a loan or for a budget amendment for the payroll? Budget amendment. So, so there's a difference between the, I'm mean, not for the payroll. It, no, for the payroll, it's never been a budget amendment. It was a. Are, are you talking about the budget amendment that we did for the nursing home no, fund? No, not for the budget. Oh, sorry. I mean for the loans. Was it a, the loan, we, we approved this once for two months for both yes. of these loans. And they were loans, correct? Yes. Okay. I'm so, sorry. I yes. misunderstood. Yeah. So, I mean, just to be clear, we, we did this for two months. And at the time, I thought we should do it for three months just because the likelihood that we were going to need it for three months. The same thing with the let's go ahead and pay the accounts receivable, the 1.9 million. We should have done that a long time before we did it. Um, I understand this desire to continually put off votes that we have to take one more week, one more month, but I, we could, I mean, just take care of the business that we're here to take care of today. Mr. Rector? I'm, I'm con I, I'm confused on the urgency on the 200000 for accounts payable. We had these people out for a whole year that were waiting, and they're all paid off. We're, if, if we're current for everybody, there's no reason we can't wait a few more weeks. Payroll's a different thing, I understand. I do not understand the urgency for two hundred k in accounts payable. Ms. King-Taylor? Given the fact that she confirmed that it's contingent upon whether or not the nursing home sells, I'm not sure why it matters when it happens. So if it happens today, it's still going to be contingent upon if it sells or not. So we're going to be in the same place with a special meeting, which to me would be unnecessary, given that we can make that decision right now. Mr. Rector? It, it matters because every month it's 200000 more. It's $1.2 million more. It's right off 4.1 in bad debt. It's more money every month, every month, every month. And that's what Mr. Goss and Mr. McGuire, every month it's 200000 more. It's another million. It's got to stop sometime. So when you want the reentry program, when you want the money for the sheriff, for the new data analyst, we spent it all. We spent it all in the last two years millions of dollars trying to keep this open. The public voted, what, two years ago? Two years ago, sell the nursing home. And this board, we're sitting here two years later and it hasn't been done. It's embarrassing. We have not done our job. Can, uh, can Mr. Uh, could Van maybe explain what would happen? I mean, with the $200,000, the, for the accounts payable, some of that is for nursing, correct? I mean, would we be able to operate the home without the 200000 Since Deb, a, would you like to speak since to Since a it? sizable part of our nursing is now no longer staff? There's, there's actually two issues to that. One is the nursing, uh, the staffing agency. Without the two hundred k, we can't pay those. Uh, to get the staffing agencies back in the home, we had to pay off their bill in full, and we actually had to start by making prepayments to them.
because we were an unreliable uh, payer. And so over from the time, and I can't thank you enough for what you did for the 1.98 million and also for the 200K per month. That's the only thing that has kept that home open up to this point. The, the staffing agencies working with us since the time we started that, we went from having to send $10,000 or more in prepayments for them to even start. We are now have them down to, uh, we, and, and not only that, when we, they got a, when we got a bill, we had to cut a pay today check and overnight it to them for them to continue sending people to the home. Uh, so in working with them and the ability to pay them, we are now getting weekly invoices that we are sending through our regular check runs that go out in the regular mail or get the electronic transfer. Without the 200K authority, no, we cannot pay those staffing agencies. The other aspect uh, with the other vendors, uh, yes, they hung with us for years, but as you saw in November, they started saying enough is enough. We burnt a lot of capital telling them that uh, not only paying the back dollars, but we told them that we would keep them current from that point forward for them to pr keep providing services. And so that's what the importance is for that 200K is just to try and keep that AP current, keep the staffing agencies in the home. Just as a follow-up question, if the staffing agencies fall below a certain level, aren't we at risk of getting more tags and then therefore having to delay the sale of the home? One of the reasons the survey was open for so long was the nursing shortage. That was, uh, and, and that are th those are the most severe uh, uh, deficiencies. Uh, they put us at risk for losing our Medicare, Medicaid certification through that process. And so having... And, and we have four different staffing agencies now providing nurses, that's the RN level, the LPN level, and also CNAs in order to try and fill shifts. We still cannot fill every shift. Uh, so we bring our, you know, we have our people working extra shifts. We have our administrators uh, pulling uh, duty on the floors as well to try and keep that going. So just as a final follow-up question, in your estimation, if we do not pass this $200,000 as a loan or as a budget amendment tonight, would that potentially have the impact of our ability to sell the home? It would, it would affect our ability to pay AP starting on, on March 8th. March 7th, March 8th will be the first uh, check run in the month of uh, March. Okay, we've had a request for a roll call vote as our second. Mr. Esri? Okay, let's have a roll call vote. No. No. Yes. No. No. Yes. 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 No. Yes. No. 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 passes the, the motion passes I think we're on number five is there a motion for uh, adoption of resolution number 2019-56 authorization for payroll loan authority to the nursing home fund from the general corporate fund is there such a motion uh, Mr. Vachespotti second by Mr. Thorsland okay any discussion Seeing none, those in favor? Aye. Those opposed? Aye. Can we get a show of hands? Do well, do roll call. That's fine, do a roll call. Hurtado. Goss. Harper. No. 
Ingram. Yes. King Taylor. Yes. Maguire. No. Patterson. Yes. Beckford. No. Store. Yes. Summers. Yes. Taylor. Sorgen. Yes. Tinsley. Ratchet Spotty. Yes. Woken. Young. Yes. Clemens. No. Clifford. No. Cohen. Yes. Eisenman. No. Esri. No. Lazar. No. Motion passes. Last item of business is the nursing home reports, which are on file only. And seeing no further business, whoops, I'm sorry, is there further business? Well, just asking, could you fill us in a little on what the special meeting or strategic or study session, what your idea is? Yes. I mean, um, strategic planning, but I mean. Yes, so um, I believe the board has agreed to spend the next four, five sessions of, that were already on your schedule for study sessions to do the strategic plan. Um, we are working out the first session, and it will be next Tuesday. Um, the idea will be to move the board toward an updated strategic plan that looks out further than the, previ the previous strategic plan, which is pretty much a year at a time, um, so that we have a vision to work toward. And there will be activities at each meeting to move the board in that direction. The first meeting will be here in this room, so I hope to see you all next Tuesday. Mr. Summers. You said the board had agreed to this. Who agreed to it? Um, the board chair. And I did ask several other board members before we had that discussion. Thank you. Ms. Fortado. I have two other business. Um, one, I'm on the labor committee or the labor liaison or whatever that is, and I've, I don't know, I've been on it a couple months now, but I haven't, we haven't done anything yet, so I don't know what it is. So one question is maybe could the labor, I have a request that the labor groups meet. Um, and the second question, uh, the second thing is, um, and I, I refrained from pointing of order during the meeting because I feel like I do that every meeting. We voted differently all, the, like, who forwarded and seconded within new business, like everyone was different. So yes. I would love it if maybe you put a memo together okay. and it said for the cow, for the regular board, and for new business, who should be firsting the motions and who should be seconding? Because like sometimes number to number it was different, yes, right? I, and it's I agree. Not, I just I let it pass. Yeah, I was a little I, lax. I don't so really care which yeah, way it is, but it just needs to be consistent. Yeah. Right. And I so, second that, Stephanie, because I have mentioned that before. I had to write my stuff out. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I was mentioned that before to her. So yeah. the rule the rule is wow. according to parliamentary procedure that in the committees that the committee chairperson is running the meeting and they are not then making the motions. In this meeting, I am running the meeting, and so the committee chair people are supposed to be making the motions or can make the motions. They don't have to. Anyone can make the motion. But in old business, the meeting, the motions come from the committee, so the committee chair is basically recommending the information that's coming to the board. There doesn't need to be a motion. It's just the recommendation from the committee. And then for a new business, Anyone can make a motion, so the committee chair is usually, I usually am just asking if the committee chair wants to do that. They shouldn't take over the meeting at that time. They should just be saying, I move that we accept this, and then there needs to be a second from that point, but I will still be handling the meeting. So that's the, that's the way I'm going to prefer to do it. Um, and I, you're right, it, has, it changes I, from person to yeah, person. I think maybe if we could write that down and I'd get that out to us, because I marked down like for yep. each one how we did it, and it was literally like every other one was Different. Yep, I'd be happy to do that. Okay, seeing no further business, this meeting is adjourned.